This is my MPPT charge controller made by a company called Eco Sources and available on eBay and Amazon, I believe. Uh, it's a good little product, but I thought I need to do a complete and utter review on this because I've been running it on my solar system for now about six months, I think. Um, and I think the time's come that I need to do a full review. So looking inside, um, there is a very big inductor, which indicates that this is proper MPPT. Um, what looks like two current shunts for measuring the um, current both coming in and on the battery, I'm guessing. There is this fuse here which isn't soldered straight to the board, it's on, can you see that? The other way around. Spade connectors, so it is removable. Um, and it's a decent product. I believe this is a temperature sensor up here at the top. Various MOSFETs and what have you. Um, people will be able to explain much more in depth than I can about those. The product built into this aluminium case. It's uh, nicely made, uh, fairly thick. The case is actually used as a heatsink for the MOSFETs. As you can see, these are insulated with this thermal. thermal uh, tubing stuff which a few people have an issue with I've had no issues with it getting warm at all now this um, switches in the positive this is PV plus this is battery plus um, rather than the negative like many uh, solar panel charge controllers so all in all um, a nice well-built product it seems um, it it's feels solid there's temperature sensors what look like reasonable MOSFETs. Um, there's some I.O. up here which presumably um, is how they're getting the there we go, uh, firmware into these things. This is version 1.9 apparently. Um, and I'll find out what the software is in a moment. So there's the sticker on the back, the eco-worthy uh, website is there. If you are interested in one of these, I'd look on eBay. They often put them on an auction with um, a best offer, and certainly my first best offer was accepted, so I got a few quid off. Okay, so let me explain what I've got here. Um, I've got an Arduino Nano on one of these breakout boards with a Nokia 5110 screen on it, the 8448 whatever it's called. Um, on the right hand side I've got a sealed lead acid battery um, which has a 20 watt lamp on it just to keep the voltage down. Um, I've got a voltage sensor here for the battery, standard uh, voltage divider module for Arduino. Up here I've got a Hall Effect um, ammeter, um, amp sensor, current sensor. Uh, is that the AC712 module? I might need to check that. Um, and then on this side of the circuit, this is the where the solar panel would come in. This is connected to the battery, obviously. Again, I've got the uh, current sensor and the volt sensor. And this display should, hopefully display the right numbers so I can see that volts coming in, current coming in and therefore how many watts, volts on the battery, current on the battery and how many watts going into the battery. So that's the plan so I'll zoom into the screen and to the MPPT charger so that we can conduct a few tests. Okay so I've got a battery on the charge controller now it's reading 12 and a half volts both on my little Arduino meter and the charge control meter um, that has a 20 watt um, halogen um, 12 volt lamp on it just to keep that battery voltage down because I don't want it to go too high before I do just power this up what I've noticed here is that the voltage reading here on the solar panel um, is showing one volt and I do suspect that the uh, back feed diode in this solar charge control is leaking somewhat and I wonder if I should replace that really um, but first obviously I'd need to find it 
So I'm having some issues with the lack of solar. So what I've done now is I've set up my boost book converter for 17 and a half volts and one amp. Okay, and this is running off my battery bank. So let's see what happens when we plug that in. If I can. So there it goes, and we'll just turn it on. Okay, so that's settling at 17.5 volts, just under, and one amp. It's squeaking a bit, but uh, the uh, inductors are squeaking a bit, but we'll keep that on for a minute or two. And as we can see now, we're back into bulk mode. Uh, one amp, exactly, perfect. 12.6 that battery voltage is confirmed by this so we're getting roughly 17 watts in and 15 and a half watts going into my battery so that's a reasonable efficiency in the 90s there somewhere isn't it let's do the MPPT demo and it reckons the efficiency is up by 44% on PWM we're getting 750 milliamps on um, MPPT we got just over an amp didn't we so this really does do MPPT um, it's reasonably efficient as we can see we've only lost about 2 watts in the uh, conversion there um, Compared to if we put uh, just use PWM, we get about 75%. If we brought the solar voltage down to a similar level to the battery voltage, we'd obviously lose watts because power in watts is voltage times current. Okay, so I've just taken that 20 watt 12 volt uh, lamp um, away from the is it away from the battery so that the um, battery level can increase um, still getting 17.3 volts on the solar and the battery's coming up to 13.2 um, still getting one amp in still getting 1.2 amps out after that DC conversion so what's coming in 17 and a bit and what's going out 16 shall we say okay so i'll just turn down the brightness a bit on the camera so that we can see the screens a bit better um still in bolt mode uh, batteries up to 13 and a half volts still getting just under an amp with meter which is about right confirmed by the arduino test rig um so it reckons 12 watts i'm seeing a little bit more down here Still in bulk, 13.5, hopefully in a moment it should stop doing MPPT and go into pulse width modulation mode um, as it goes through the absorb and the float cycles. So once I turn off the solar panel it goes into sleeping mode, no amps coming in whatsoever. Um, if I turn it back on again, there it goes. It goes up to one amp charging that battery in bulk mode if I turn down the ampage coming in I think it's to less than half an amp 500 milliamps it's now in snoozing mode um, and I'm not entirely sure of the difference between snoozing and sleeping other than it snoozes when there's less than half an amp coming in so if we look through the menu system here, um, you've got an absorb voltage, which I've currently got set to 13.8. Float voltage setting, which I've got 13.5 volts. Um, a discharge set over discharge, so if my batteries go down to 11.8, um, the output turns off. Um, and the output starts again once we get to 12 volts on the batteries um, there's a clock set um, it's not correct at the moment um, that's used for some of the timings on the output so 
I've got mine set to always on on the output. Um, I use switches, external switches to turn things on and off, but we can change that to manual. Um, this is CDS is dependent when once the light has gone on the uh, panels itself, you can change the amount of time it stays on for. Um, and then these are the time modes. So on at midday, off at midnight, or for example, there's various different uh, levels. Once the light's gone, how many hours does it stay on for? If you're using it as a security light system, something like that. So I can thoroughly recommend this charge controller. Mine's working really well. I do need to investigate that blocking diode, but other than that, I think it's been a really worthwhile investment. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this review and uh, investigation, um, so if you have, give it a thumbs up, subscribe down below, uh, comment, like and share, and I uh, will see you next time. Thanks for watching.